part B now is about the same situation. So I can go ahead and put, you can keep the picture here that we had uh, before. Okay, all right, so then we found that the buoyant force is 25,000. Right. And so um, that buoyant force is equal to rho g times volume of the submerged portion. Solving for the volume. Good. We know that rho is a thousand. And G is ten. For object one. Good. All right. So let's finish that off. That sounds good. Question was? Uh, yeah, it says, what's, what is the submerged volume of the buoy? That's right, so this is the submerged portion for object one. I could have said V sub for object one uh -huh. down here. Yeah, so that, that is a really good question for us to have uh, to gone through this. There's a really basic, um, not easy, but basic types of uh, fluid problems. So if you see another fluid problem in the final, um, these would be the types of ideas that would be likely to come up. So let's review the key ideas. So one key idea you already remembered. Um, this is the formula for buoyant force, and it depends only on the portion that is submerged. That's just common sense. Um, like if you take a beach ball to the beach, well, it's easy to stick a little bit of the beach ball underneath. Right. But you know that the more and more that you submerge, the harder and harder it is to push down. It's like there's a little person pushing back up. In fact, sometimes it's impossible to push the whole beach ball underneath the water. Yeah. Well, that's reflected in this formula here. On the other hand, once you have completely submerged it, it's not any harder to keep pushing it even further down. The buoyant force doesn't increase once it's completely submerged. Okay. So it's always a good idea to make a clear picture of whether the object is completely submerged or not. And remember on your final, you're likely to see multi-part problems where the picture is different for different parts. So in some parts, the object might be completely submerged and some parts it's not. They're really keeping us on our toes here because we have one object that's always completely submerged and one that might not be. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, now um, one thing that was giving us a little difficulty here was when do we need to use a special formula for a force, and when are we supposed to use Newton's second law? And that partly needs some judgment. Uh, because after all, um, in order that the last question was asking you for the buoyant force, right? Um, no, I was asking you for the volume submerged. Yeah. But anyway, the point was, for that very last part, you did use Newton's second law first, and then you used the special formula. And my, my only advice would be, your first instinct should be just to try to use the special formula. But if you don't have enough information for that, then plan B is to try to figure out what you need from Newton's second law. The mistake that people make is they go straight to Newton's second law, and they might make a, a simple problem much more complicated. For example, there was a, a very simple problem earlier on where they just asked you for the weight, we could just figure out this. Yeah. But if these formulas don't work, then we can try to figure that out from Newton's second law. One other point is we don't need to worry about the apparent weight unless the question actually asks us for that. It's true that this is not going to feel like it weighs 20,000 newtons, but that doesn't make any difference for solving this type of problem unless they ask us for that. The actual weight is always m times g. Mm -hmm. um, so we didn't need that more uh, difficult concept of apparent weight here. Okay, and the other ideas here I think um, already were uh, making sense to you. You already seem to be in the habit of writing a separate Newton's second law for the different situations here for the two different objects. Mm -hmm. All right, well, that was a complicated problem. I would recommend um, try to mark that, and before the final, try to do it again, and yeah. make sure, because just because you can get through it once doesn't mean that you can get through it again. So this would be a good question to try again. Okay. okay. These videos are offered on a pay-what-you-like basis. You can pay for the use of the videos at my website. There's a link to my website in the info box. The address is wwwfreelance dash teacher.com slash videos dot htm or you can just use the link in the info box. Thank you.